They did it at Coachella Valley with Mike Vecchioni's Calder Cup winning Game 7 overtime winner one year later against the Firebirds again. It's Matt Strom who delivers another historic Hershey Bears playoff moment. The Calder Cup winning Game 6 overtime goal in front of a record crowd over 11,000 at Giant Center. Welcome in to this special Calder Cup edition of the Sunday Sports Frenzy. I'm Todd Sadowski alongside Evan Brooks and Ryan Yee. The Bears elevate in all of the big moments to capture their 13th Calder Cup. So exciting. <laughs> Just like we did last year, we dedicate an entire frenzy to all of the great moments the Bears had and, and to become back-to-back -back Calder Cup champions. Yeah, and the road to lucky number 13 was thrilling, nerve-wracking, exhilarating. <laughs> I mean, throw in all the adjectives in there. It had a little bit of everything, uh, but it was all worth it. In the end, the Bears repeat the roar. We start with a record-breaking regular season. This is the way you want every season to start by hanging a championship banner from the previous year. Opening night, October 14th, banner number 12 rises to the rafters. Plenty of records fall during the year. The teddy bear toss goal scored by Bogdan Trenyea, the new record of 74,599 collected and distributed to local charities. Exceptional year for the goaltenders. Hunter Shepard and Clay Stevenson combined on a new franchise mark with 12 shutouts. It's all part of a season that sees the Bears win and win and then win some more. Oh, most wins in a 72 game schedule for the American Hockey League with 53. Highest winning percentage in team history 771. They lock up the division title Eastern Conference top seed and something that proves crucial in the end home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. It's been a great season so far for us. You know what? Uh, to be, in the, to be in the position that we're in, um, you know, we're not finished yet. We want to make sure, you know, if, if we go the distance this year, we have home ice throughout the uh, throughout the playoffs. So there's like there's more there's more goals ahead of us for the rest of the season. And Todd Nelson named the AHL's outstanding coach, Shepard, the league's top goaltender. Individual awards are nice. Once again, this group sets their sights on the Calder Cup. From a historic regular season to a historic postseason, it all starts one game at a time. After earning a first round by the Bears start their defense against their formidable rival just up the road in the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, where they get out in front and never let up. Shot deflection, score! A chip on the way and into the net it goes. Hendricks Lapierre's back and he is on the board. Lapierre is one of a handful of Bears returning to Hershey after playing for the Capitals in the Stanley Cup playoff series against the Rangers. He starts his Calder Cup MVP run in game number one. The Bears dominate at home to take a two-zip series lead. Ethan Frank also with a strong series versus the Phantoms. And of course, Hunter Shepard with winning performances between the pipes. They would drop game number three on the road in Allentown before they settle in and finish the job at game four. A tough opponent is put in the rearview mirror. Exciting, you know. It's uh, we go over a lot of a lot of game plans and video, and, and six on five was one of the things we stress going into this series because we know it's going to happen on both sides of the puck, and so uh, being prepared for that was big, and it feels good to close it out. The Atlantic Division is one of the toughest in the AHL, and Lehigh Valley tests the Bears in their first series. Garrett Rowe was inserted into the lineup in Game Four, and that move pays off in the next series as well. And the next obstacle for the division championship is the Hartford Wolfpack. In the words of the Capitals 2022 first round draft pick Ivan Miroshnichenko, the Bears go hunt Wolf. And Miro does his part to accomplish the goal. Miroshnichenko, he's hot down the left wing, curl and drag, that great move, great play, shoots and scores! You gotta be kidding me! Impressive move from Miro. He helps to electrify the crowd. LaPierre tips this wrister from Jake Massey. Hershey avoids any speed bumps and runs over Hartford in three straight. Two home victories to open the series. And then the finisher on the road. Virginia native Garrett Rowe with a couple of goals in game three. He came back near home from playing overseas to be part of a run like this. They outscore the Wolfpack 14 to 4 in a quick and one side of the fair. The short work to win the division gives the Bears plenty of time to rest up for the Eastern Conference Finals. It's fun to be a part of an organization, obviously growing up as a uh, Caps fan and then kind of have be in their affiliation. Um, it's been a fun ride and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, continue the momentum. 
A sweep of Hartford for the second year in a row in the division finals. Now it's on to a best of seven against the Cleveland Monsters. And after a long eight day wait between series, the Bears stay undefeated at home and take the first two games against Cleveland in dramatic fashion. They find out immediately though, the Monsters have that dog in them and won't go away very easily. We start with the first two in the Giants center. Monsters score twice in the final minutes to force overtime. Mike Vecchioni comes through in the clutch and buries the game winner in OT game two. Again, Cleveland scores in the final moments of regulation in the extra session. Pierre Dubé is the hero, takes the pass from Jimmy Huntington. Bears in overtime once the series shifts to Cleveland. There's nothing to fear at first game. Three is a breeze 6 2 for the Bears and they're on the verge of closing it out. The Monsters rally though and take games four and five to stave off elimination. Once they're back in Hershey they go ahead and win game six with an overtime goal setting the stage for a phenomenal finish to an epic Eastern Conference Finals. Frank Porch Huntington Day wants it. Shot to the goal. Block comes loose. They score! Garrett Rowe, the Game 7 hero to book the Bears ticket into the Calder Cup Finals. Of course, one of the most important goals in the Hershey Bears season, but also one of the most important goals in Garrett Rowe's career that held a lot of meaning. His mom passed away last summer. For Rowe, this one was for her. My mom would have been um, thrilled to go through this with us, this whole ride. Um, so it's, it's just cool to share those memories with my brothers here tonight, his wife, his kid, my kid. So... That's the part of life that's just more than hockey sometimes, you know, and, and it's, um, hockey's obviously something, but, you know, life is, is more than that. Amazing moment for Rowe. By the way, Pierre Dubé lost six teeth when he was hit in the face in game three of this series, had emergency dental surgery the next day, but returned for game seven and scored a pivotal goal to help the Bears win. So it all comes down to Hershey and Coachella Valley again. Last time we saw these two teams, well, this was the scene at Acroshore Arena. The Bears celebrating a Game 7 overtime winner for Mike Vecchioni. A mere one year later, it's the Bears and Firebirds, Part 2. And a monster-weary squad drops Game 1 at home, so the Bears have to win Game 2 before they head cross-country to the desert. Hardy Hominoctil offers an insurance blast from the point to give Hershey a cushion. They weren't great, still good enough to even the series before they catch the charter flight soon after to get to California. The last stumble comes in Game 3. Firebirds from the same spot Vecchioni scored from. Coachella crowd goes wild for their guys. The Bears are down two games to one, but this team knows how to get back up. They play from in front most of the way in Game 4 and lock it down in the final minutes to make sure this series will return to Chocolate Town. And game 4 is the one they need. Game 5 is the one they really want. And they get it, courtesy of this Jimmy Huntington goal with a little over three minutes left to break the tie. The Firebirds team and fans are absolutely stunned. And Bears fans know their guys are on the verge of another cup. They come out to greet the guys at HIA as they get off the Patriots charter plane. The Calder Cup is in the building. And Pierre Dubé, well, he leads the offensive charge in game six. Elite move in front of the net to complete a hat trick. The lids pour down onto the ice, but the lead does not hold up. And it sets up Strom's heroics a little over one minute into the extra session. In front, he couldn't find him. Strom's got it. In front, he scores! Oh, what a great call from the voice of the Bears, Zach Fish. Incredible drama from this year's team. And Strom is an unlikely and popular hero. We're so confident. Um, you know, all year we worked so hard, all of us together. And, you know, we were, before training camp started, Nelly said we had a better team than last year. You know, we set, almost set the record for the best in the league. So we knew this was in reach, and it's just unbelievable. Well, I hustled out onto the ice as fast as I could after Strom's goal, and this raw emotion from Matt is just simply awesome. And I mean, the crowd excitement after that uh, game-winning goal was incredible, and among those thousands of fans who were celebrating the Bears' 13th Calder Cup, one particularly had a special place in one of the players' hearts. Coming up next on the Calder Cup frenzy, more on the storybook ending and the championship moment shared between Hershey Bears forward Jimmy Huntington and his number one fan, Cooper. The Calder Cup frenzy will be right back.
Welcome back to the Calder Cup edition of the Sunday Sports Frenzy. A bond between one of the Hershey Bears players and his number one fan became even stronger after the Calder Cup win this week. It was a storybook ending for Bears forward Jimmy Huntington and Cooper Schultz, who got to share their championship dream together. A championship moment both a Bears player and his number one fan have been waiting for. I'm so excited. We just won that champ. And now, oh my gosh, I'm just here in the ice, man. That was my first time right now. Like, oh my gosh. Cooper Schultz and Jimmy Huntington share a special relationship that all started with the pregame ritual when Huntington played for Milwaukee. Now a season later, a new team, but the same strong bond, they got the biggest win of them all, Calder Cup and Hershey, together. That relationship developed over the years and the years, and uh, you know what, like, sometimes we have hockey, but it's bigger in the game. And uh, you know what, little things makes things happening, and I'm so happy they're here they, so they can enjoy it with me. A game six that began with a whole lot of hope in Cooper's corner ends with a post-game moment to remember in the same spot. A moment with his best bud that was still hard to fathom. I'm so excited, and, and now this year we just won a champ. Yes. Yep. And I went out by gosh, like to miss my buddy right now. A special bond that grows stronger each year, and now with a championship under their belt, you can count on finding Cooper in his corner, supporting Jimmy for many years to come. It's a lucky charm right here, and he's a lucky charm for uh, for her. She, I just felt supported in this, and it, it, it's awesome. What a moment for those two guys. Of course, no championship run is complete without the celebration as the cherry on top. Thousands of Bears fans packing the Giants Center one final time to show support for another job well done by their hometown Bears. The roars from the fans are thunderous for the now 13-time Calder Cup champion Hershey Bears. The crowd eager to attend yet another championship celebration coming out in full force at the Giants Center with new merchandise and gear. Everyone wants to get a piece of the back-to-back -back champions as players sign autographs and thank the fans for their unwavering support. It's a feeling that Hershey Bears fans don't get tired of seeing and the team never gets tired of giving them. For the thousands of fans, it's a championship that means so much more for a team that cares so deeply about winning for themselves and the fans. The fans are the best part about all of it, you know what I mean? There would be no Hershey Bears without the fans, you know what I'm saying? So it's awesome to be able to interact and celebrate it with the guys out back there. But their motivation is to see the fans excited, see us happy, and winning it, there's nothing like winning at home. To know that we got new players from last year that didn't get a chance to win the cup, but they are here now and they got to win another cup and they get to celebrate it with the fans. To me, I really like that. Safe to say the fans can't wait for next season as their beloved Hershey Bears go for a three-peat. Up next, the Bears describe what it's like to win the Calder Cup moments after the game-winning goal. Hear the emotion and elation from the champs themselves when we come back on Fox 43's Calder Cup Prince. On June 21st of last year, I had as much fun as I've ever had in my career, interviewing the Bears after Mike Vecchione's Game 7 overtime winner at Coachella Valley. Had no idea that one year later, I'd get to do it all over again, this time on home ice in front of 11,013 roaring fans at Giants Center. Here are some of the Bears' reactions after repeating the roar to become back-to-back -back Calder Cup champs. continues to step up. You're not surprised it was Matt Strom, are you? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, anyone in that room could have done it. And, you know, uh, for him to do it, it just makes it all that much better. Matt, you're, you're literally bleeding for this, dude. I mean, this is what it's, this is what it takes. You're bleeding for this. Yeah, it's, uh, we talked about it all year, and especially down the stretch here, we are going to need to sacrifice for one another. We were going to do whatever it takes. I know it sucked losing that lead like that, but it was never a doubt. We just we knew we were going to battle for each other. You joined this team because you knew this was a, gr a special group of guys. 
I, I mean, this is amazing what you guys were able to accomplish. Another overtime victory, this time to repeat the roar. Yeah, I mean, you, you put in work every day, you come to the rink, you know, sometimes there are just no words. I mean, you, you might play your whole career and never have a chance to win a championship, and we knew coming in that we had a chance this season, and all we did was work for that chance, and it feels unbelievable for that to come to fruition. But you get to compare what it's like to win a Calder Cup on the road and at home. That's so, I mean, to get one is great, Mike, but to get yeah. both, how do you compare the two at this point being in front of these fans? It felt good over there, you know, shutting them up, but there's no better place to win a championship than at home. This place absolutely blew up. And, uh, you know, you just, you're going to have that feeling forever. Those chills are going to go down your spine every time you remember this. And uh, we got the best fans in the world, man. Like, this is um, unbelievable. And, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm still in shock that we did it again, man. Talk about what it's like to have these guys in front of you all the, through a playoff series and your vantage point, because you get to see it all right in front of you. Yeah, I mean, as a goalie, I think it's easy to handle the stress. A lot of times it's because you don't want to let these guys down. You know, and uh, I said it to you how the goalie coach and play, I think, a day or two ago. We were due to have a game where we scored five or six, and the guys picked me up tonight because, you know, I, my standard's not my best game, but, you know, that's just how it's been. You know, twice a team, and wouldn't, oh boy, wouldn't want to have anybody else with these, this group of guys here, so it was awesome. Two years, two Calder Cups, and Hershey, you got the magic touch, my man. You know what, uh, what a magical season it was for us, you know. We had a target on our back all year, and we let the league wire to wire be the best team in the league, and then we were expected to win this year. And I think that's where the pressure came from. Last year, we kind of came out of nowhere a bit. Uh, but this year, we had a target on our back, and the guys got the job done. Amazing emotion, so much fun. Still to come, our Calder Cup Frenzy 5. Some unforgettable moments you may not have seen on our broadcasts or social media, including the locker room celebration along with Coachella Valley and their agony of defeat. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to our special Calder Cup Frenzy, the Hershey Bears. What a ride it's been for the back-to-back -back champions. Yeah, which means the celebrations will continue for a long time. We share with you five unforgettable moments that we witnessed or enjoyed. Ryan gets us rolling. Yeah, let's get rolling, guys. Who better to start with than with Hershey Bears captain Dylan McElrath? Not only was handed the cup to hoist for his team and himself, but a chance for him to share that special moment with his son. A victory lap for the two to take in the championship moment, a night they will never forget and will remember for many years to come. It's one of the classic lines from the old Wild World of Sports program. While one team experiences the thrill of victory, the other, in this case, Coachella Valley again, the agony of defeat. I looked over to the Firebird side of the ice for a few seconds to see them crushed once again by an overtime winner. Late in the Calder Cup Finals, they waited to go through the handshake line. Respect to a team that has made it to the finals in their first two years of existence, but it was always the Bears. Let's keep the party going. The Hershey Bears know how to play on the ice and party off of it. The locker room shenanigans are all Always a must post championship. Many of the players taking turns of drinking out of the cup to celebrate their massive win and plenty of adult beverages to go with it. Shout out to Todd and Ryan for even being able to get this amazing video and capture one of the best moments right after the Bears win the cup. Yeah, it was definitely a pretty wild locker room, but of course we know the Hershey Bears fan support was a big Calder Cup winning piece. Let me tell you, it was epitomized by the welcome the Bears received when they landed back at HIA off of Bear Force One from their away stretch in the desert. Fans made sure to walk the tarmac to, to the fans to thank them for their support. A really cool sight to see. Yeah, and perhaps the greatest honor and thrill we can experience covering a championship team, as you mentioned, Evan, is to be there when the corks pop and the champagne starts to spray. The Calder Cup enters the room appropriately with Matt Strom carrying it in as the Hershey Bears start at that locker room celebration as the back-to-back -back champs, a long, difficult road that requires everyone on the team to buy into the postseason motto of all in. Congrats to the 23-24 Calder Cup champs. I mean, what a season, right? I mean, just from start to finish, just incredible. A memorable one for the 2023-2024 Hershey Bears. Definitely memorable. We struck lightning in a <laughs> bottle. Two back-to-back -back champions. Can't ask for much more. Special thanks to Great Save Productions, the Hershey Bears, for their partnership on the broadcast to bring Bears hockey to all the fans for the entire Frenzy crew. Thanks for watching, and congrats to the back-to-back -back Calder Cup champions.